What in the world? A million home price alert in the second half of the year? Oh, folks, if you are thinking about buying or selling in the next year, you need to check this out. Let me clean this up and I'll tell you what's going on. <laughs> hey folks, Mike Evans, Blue Root Properties Broker with EXP Really. Thank you so much for joining me on another episode where I like to discuss about things in the housing market in the areas of which I traditionally serve, Kitsap, Pierce, Thurston, and Mason counties that are extremely significant to those of you who are considering buying or selling a home. Things you should be considering, things you should be watching. Now, something significant occurred in 2023 in the 30-day period between July and August, and that was a median home price increase of $10,000. Now, that is a 1.9% increase in the appreciation in just four weeks. That is something significant. You may not feel like it's too much because we've seen bigger uh, jumps here and there, especially in the last few years, but not in the second half of any year. Let's take a step back so we can understand kind of what happens in the Washington market out here. In the first half of every year from January to June, that is where we see all of our appreciation because we have buyers out there, we have sellers out there, weather is much better, you know, uh, vacation schools, things like that are all falling into place. And that's when people want to make a move. In, in the past decade, the average amount of appreciation in those first six months of every year is right above 12%. It's actually about 12.4%. That is a lot of money. And you would think that, okay, we're going to start seeing that in the second half. Actually, the second half from July to December, we only see a negative 1.1% appreciation on average. The only other time in July and August in the past decade that we actually saw a significant increase was 2014, where we saw about $4,075 increase in the median home price to the tune of 1.7%. So to put that in the further perspective, if you would think about the chaos and the insanity that ensued between 2020 and 2022, where people were giving up, you know, inspections, they were waiving them, they were paying way above appraised value, they were sacrificing goats, all in the name of being able to get a sub 3.5% interest rates. Well, during those years, the highest appreciation in one month in the second half of any of those three years was in 2020 between August and September. And then we only saw a $5,000 increase. Whoa, so what happened? Why in 2023 with 7% plus interest rates did we see a $10,000 increase? That's a very good question. So to answer that question, let's take a look at how much activity there is with the buyers and how much activity there is with the sellers. And activity with buyers measured by how many homes actually go under contract called pending. In measuring seller activity, we can see how many homes new listings are coming up in those months. So let's look at the buyer side. So for the period between January and the end of August, we have seen over 13,200 homes go under contract. That seems like a lot. But if you compare it to a year that's a little you know, nondescript, um, nothing significant occurred in it. You know, I'm not talking like going all the way back to 2013, um, where arguably we were still kind of recovering from 2008, 2009. And obviously I'm not going to be talking about 2020 and, 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 you know, in the last few years because of everything that occurred with those interest rates. But if we take a look at like maybe 2017 and compare that 13,200, a little more than we've seen, the buyer activity from 2023 in 2017, we had 19,500, over, actually closer to 19,600. So that is a reduction of nearly 6,400 buyers, you know, did not go under contract for a home. That is pretty remarkable. And you would think that actually that's a positive thing if you wanted to maintain some affordability and maybe see the prices start coming down. The median home price should start coming down. So why did it go up? Well, if we look at listings, for 2023, again, January 1 to August 31st, we had a total of new listings of just over 15,100 new listings. And again, if we compare it to the same year, 2017, we had 23,700 plus listings come to market that year. That is 
over 8,600 less options for the buyers that are out there. And now the buyer pool is depressed, but it's not as depressed as inventory. So the question on my mind, and it should be your mind too, is is this 10,000 increase just a blip on the radar? I unfortunately think we're going to see uh, continued appreciation, maybe not significantly $10,000, but I think we're either going to see very stable or it's going to continue to go up just a little bit. I don't think we're going to see any depression, even getting into the holidays. And the, the reason for that is, is simply choices. There's already 8,600 less choices for the buyers that are out there, and it's only going to get worse. And the difference between what happened in 2020, 2021, 2022, where those sellers were not sitting on a two and a half, three and a half percent interest rates, they sold their homes to take advantage of the uh, equity that they could get from those homes and then competed to get that low rate. And they're all in there. And those ones that didn't sell during that time, refinance into it. So the majority of home buyers are sitting on that very low interest rate and they have no desire to put their home on the market during a 7% interest uh, rate or higher uh, period or with the holidays and winter upcoming when they know it's going to slow down. So when are they going to put their house on the market? Maybe never. And that's what's got me scared because if we have a perfect storm of inflation getting under control, the Fed starting to relax interest rates, especially in the first half of 2024. Mind you, again, it's an election year. And while the current administration is saying publicly they're not putting any pressure on the Feds, it's kind of hard to believe because they want to get reelected and nothing makes voters happier than having cash in their pockets when they go to the polls. If you're a buyer and you're thinking, okay, I'm going to wait for those interest rates to come down. Remember, they're at just into August of this year. We still have a couple months left. We're short about 6,400 buyers short because they're all thinking the same thing that you're thinking, that they're going to wait until a more appropriate time, what they think is it was going to be a lower interest rate. But the problem is your choices will not be there. It's not going to be any better than these unless it gets so insane that your home price all of a sudden goes up a couple tens, tens of thousands, hundred thousand dollars simply because there's nothing out there. Because again, what makes something valuable when it's rare, when there's less of it and there's a desire to have it? And the desire is going to be there when the interest rates come down, even just a little bit. There's going to be a renewed interest. There's going to be a few more people out there for the very few options that are out there. So guess what? Those very few options are going to become increasingly more and more valuable. comes down to choices. And when that spring market comes into play, it may not take a 4%. It may not take a 5% interest rate. It may only be 6% that lights the spark that causes complete chaos. Because again, the folks who are sitting in something sub three and a half are not coming to market. The inventory will not be there. We are not going to have a whole bunch of new builds all of a sudden flood the market in this area. It's just not going to happen. And that is just going to cause a rapid appreciation, likely more than the 12% that we normally see. So for all those folks who bought a home in 2020 to 2022 where everybody laughed at them <laughs> for purchasing a home, way above appraised value just for the sake of getting a two and a half to three and a half percent interest rate. Yeah, I know you were probably sweating it for a little while, but your time is coming to an end because if the little things occur here in 2024, uh, that I suspect is going to happen, you're going to be watching the median home price soar beyond what you paid for your home on homes that are inferior to yours. And you're going to be sitting on a rate that we likely will not see in our lifetimes again. So who's laughing now? So message to my buyers, 
I, I don't mean to sound all gloom and doom or, or things like this, but I, I'm honestly concerned with regards to anything affordable. And I'm also very, very concerned with uh, your ability and your purchasing power. What you think might be $500,000 today, if you wait for those rates to come down, may only end up being four seventy-five or four fifty dollars in reality because the home prices are going up and you could get priced out of the market. What I encourage you to do is have some conversations with a lender and your trusted real estate professional. If you do not have either one of those, please call me and, and text me and I could help you out but start having those conversations now and decide whether or not it's it's in your in your best interest to actually purchase today under the conditions of today and that means a potentially a seven percent interest rate but the home prices are going to be lower than what they will in just a few months from now and you can get more with less competition uh, than you will if you wait for the rates to start to come down so to my sellers Boy, you're 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 in the driver's seat, and if you can hold off on selling your home, and if you have to sell, I, I always say this: if you if you're sitting on a sub three and a half percent interest rate, you may never see that interest rate again, and that is a time for you to be able to you know, potentially create generational wealth for you and your family by holding on to that home. And if you have to move, or look into renting that home. But if you are in a position where you have to sell the home, um, the, it, it, please try not to sell it during this period. Please try to wait until you get into, into 2024, you know, perhaps February, March, or April, uh, are the typical times that we're, we see, you know, the greatest activity and, and the increase in the median home prices. But if you can't get to that period of time, if you can't get gifts to help you, you know, pay your mortgage to that certain, that point in time, there are programs out there, and I'd be happy to explain them to you in more detail, where it would allow you to go out and shop today as a non-contingent buyer, meaning you don't have to sell your home today to be able to buy your next one. You'd be treated as a cash buyer in the eyes of the seller of, of the home that you potentially want to purchase. And then once you secure that home, you have up to six months to be able to renovate your old home and get it onto the market and get sold. And that six months will allow you to get into the beginning of 2024, where you're going to receive a much favorable value whether the interest rates come down or not it's just gonna it's just come i mean it's just history it's just tradition it's it's uh it's statistics it's all right there you're gonna make more money it next year in the beginning of every year than you would at the end of the year prior if you have any questions regarding the market, anything that I've touched on here or, or whatnot, think about buying or selling out here in the areas that I traditionally serve, uh, Kitsap, you know, Pierce, Thurston, and Mason counties, even a little outside of that, I'll go. Um, call me, text me, email me. I'd love to answer all your questions and love to help you out. Thank you.